Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Rosalind Russell and Zachary Scott in Mildred Pierce. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keelan. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Thinking back over the unforgettable characters we've seen in the motion pictures of recent years, I'm certain that high on your list and mine will be Mildred Pierce. She was brought to life first in James M. Cain's realistic and inspired book, and then in Warner Brothers' magnificent film. A mother's love for her children has always been a great subject for drama. To Mildred Pierce, it's a love that means more than life itself. And tonight, her poignant story is brought to us by the artistry of Rosalind Russell, as she co-stars with Zachary Scott. An achievement like Mildred Pierce will always be outstanding in the film world, and is brought to you tonight by Lux Flakes, a product that's tops in quality, too. You're the final judge in both cases, and your verdict on Lux Flakes keeps it at the top of the domestic hit parade. Our stars are on stage, and here's the curtain for tonight's play starring Rosalind Russell as Mildred Pierce and Zachary Scott as Monty. It's only coincidence that a police car happens to be cruising by this lonely stretch of road along the Pacific Ocean, not far from Malibu Beach. There's a house on the beach, and a man is just leaving. Stay where you are, Mr. Oh. Oh, well, g- good evening, officers. Is that the way you usually leave a house, smash a window and jump? Oh, I, I'm an eccentric. Start but... making sense, mister. Okay, but you're not going to believe me. Hang on to him, Frank. I'll take a look in the house. Who's in there, mister? Oh, nobody. What's your name? Uh, Wally Fay. I own that cafe, Wally's Place, a few miles up the beach. Wally's Place, huh? Yeah. Who owns this house? Uh, a man named Barragon. Now, now, look, I'm on the level, see? I know it's going to sound awful screwy, but... You keep but... saying that, but you don't tell me anything. Well, um... I'm a friend of Mrs. Barragon's. Well, she drops by the cafe tonight. How long? Uh, uh, yeah. She uh, well, she says, why not drive out here to the beach house? So naturally, I... Naturally. Uh, well, um, we're in the house, and she says something about fixing a drink. But, well, she don't come back, see? So so I start looking. Only the doors are locked. You know, all the doors, and then she's gone. Mm, ran out, huh? Yeah. Lock the doors so you wouldn't chase after her. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe... Well, maybe she wanted to get me in trouble. A nice guy like you. Hey, Al, looks like we run into something. Need any help? Plenty. There's a man in there on the floor, full of bullets. Oh, his name's Marty Berrigan. Oh, I, I didn't kill him, and I, I, I don't know who did. As soon as I saw the body, I smashed Bring the, the window. House, I jumped... Frank, I'll phone headquarters. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Berrigan. Where's my daughter? In the living room, madam. Mother, where have you been? What's happened? They won't tell me anything. Who won't tell you anything? Mrs. Berrigan? Yes? We're the, from the police. The inspector would like to see you. Why? What's the matter? If you will just come with us, please. Mother, at this time of night... It's all right, Peter, dear. Whatever it is, I'll take care of it. Good night, darling. What's wrong? Why can't you tell me what happened? We didn't want to say anything in front of your daughter. It's your husband, Mrs. Berrigan... He's been murdered. Please sit down, Mrs. Berrigan. I'm Inspector Peterson. And I apologize for bringing you down here for nothing. What do you mean, for nothing? Well, we know now who killed your husband. We're just booking him. So you're free to leave, Mrs. Berrigan. Who did it, can't you tell me? Well, you're entitled to know. Yes, sir. Bring him in. Just in the next room, Mrs. Berrigan. Bert! Hello, Mildred. No, no. He's the man, Mrs. Berrigan, Bert Pierce. No, no, Bert. I won't let you do this. Mildred, I... All I That's want... all, McNally. Yes, sir. But... Well, what about Wally Fay? How do you know he didn't do it? Wally Fay? I saw him here a few minutes ago down the hall while I was waiting oh, to come in. Oh, yes, yes. Well, Fay had no motive, Mrs. Berrigan. Bert Pierce had. But he didn't do it. I know he didn't. The murder was committed with this pistol. It belongs to Pierce. That's fact number one. Fact number two, he doesn't deny killing Mr. Berrigan. Seems to think it was a very good idea. Bert didn't kill him. He couldn't. 
He's too kind and gentle. Okay, he's kind and gentle. But uh, that makes me curious, Mrs. Berrigan. Why did you divorce him? Because I was wrong. It's taken me four years to find that out. Now I know I was wrong. Four years, huh? Well, let's see. Uh, Pierce was in the real estate business then, wasn't he? Yes. He and Wally Fay were partners. I married Bert when I was 17. Started a life of cooking and washing and having children. Two girls. Vida and Kay. Only Kay died. Pneumonia. She wasn't quite eight years old. I'm sorry, Miss Berger. Bert used to blame me for spoiling Vida. But I couldn't help it. I'd lost one child and I... Well, it... It was a year after Kay died that Bert and Wally Faye broke up. Wally had the business and Bert was out in the cold. Is that you, Bert? Yeah. Who else? What's this package? A dress. For Vida? Yes, it's for Vida. The piano recital. Where'd the money come from? From doing what I'm doing now, baking cakes for the neighbors. I earned the money. That's right, Mildred. Throw it up to me that I can't I'm support... I'm sorry, Bert. But I don't say half as much as I could with nothing but bills staring us in the face. Maybe you wouldn't have so many bills if you didn't try to bring up that kid like her old man was a millionaire. No wonder she's so fresh and stuck up. Well, one of these days I'm going to haul if off If you and... dare, if you dare touch me now... All right, all right. Trouble with you, you're trying to buy love from that kid and it won't work. I've always made enough to get by, but no. Vida has to have a piano and lessons and... Fancy dresses so she can sit up on a platform smirking her way through a piece any five-year-old could play. Vita has talent. You just ask the neighbors. She plays the piano like I shoot pool. All right. What if I do want her to amount to something? She's all I've got, Bert. And I'll do anything for Vita, do you understand? Anything. You can't do her crying for her. I'll do that, too. She's never going to do any crying if I can help it. Oh, it's not right, Mildred. I'm not smart, I know, but I... Hello? Yes? Yes, he is. It's for you, Maggie Biederhoff. Yeah, Maggie? Well, I... Uh, I can't talk to you now. But I told you not to call me at... Okay. Yeah, yeah, later. So the noble Mr. Pierce can't talk now. Maggie means nothing to me. You know that. I wish I could believe it. Well, you'd better run down and apologize. Now, look, Mildred, don't go too far. One of these days, I'll call your bluff. Well, I'm calling yours right now, once and for all. My child comes first in this house before either of us. Maybe that's right and maybe it's wrong, but that's the way it is. I'm going to do the best I can for Vita. And if I can't do it with you, I'll do it alone. Then go ahead and try it. See how you get along without me for a while. Bert, you see that woman again and you're never coming back here. I mean that. I do what I want to do. Then pack up, Bert. All right, I will. About Vita. Oh, what about her? When she comes home, maybe you could just tell her that I... I... I'll think of something. Oh, Mildred, I... Go on, Bert. There's nothing more to say. Just go on. That's the man you say is kind and gentle? There's a lot more you should know, Inspector. Well, go ahead. I... I dreaded the moment I'd have to tell Vita her father had gone. I was still in the kitchen when I heard her come in. Mother? In here, darling. How did the lesson go? Very well, I think. I, um... I saw father down the block. He was crossing the street. He had his suitcases. Did he? Where's he going? Vita. Look, darling. Uh, you may as well know it. Your father and I have have decided to separate. He's not coming back? No. No, I don't think so. I can't tell you any more now. If you mean Maggie Biederhoff, Mother, I must say my sympathy's all with you. Vita, Vita, please. It was just, uh, well, just little things. Things like your dress. My dress? It came? It's up in your room. Oh, Mother, why didn't you tell me? That night, for the first time in my life, I felt all alone. So much to remind me of Bert. How things used to be with us. What great hopes we had. But I didn't have much time to feel sorry for myself. The doorbell rang. 
It was Bert's ex-partner, Wally Fay. Ah, uh, believe me, Mildred, I told him a thing or two. You know, Bert must be off his rocker walking out in a girl like you. You didn't come here to tell me that. <laughs> you bet your life I didn't. But with Bert out of the way, I was hoping maybe there's a chance for me, honey. You know, I've always been soft in the head where you're concerned. Oh, cut it out, Wally. <laughs> One of these days, you're going to have a weak moment, honey, and I'm going to be around when it happens. <laughs> you're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? <laughs> you've got to be educated, Mildred. Why, you've just joined the biggest army in the world. A grass widow with a kid to support. Well? Well, you'll get lonesome. Uh, you're not the kind who can get along by yourself. I can try. Oh, come on. I bet you're lonesome already. Good night, Wally. Oh, now, look. Well, you can't shoot a guy for trying. I'll be seeing you, honey. Mother? Did Wally go? Vita. Well, I thought you were asleep. Yes, he's gone, dear. Is father going to marry that Vita Huff woman? I don't know, dear. But I do know that you should be asleep. I've been thinking. You could marry Wally if you wanted to. But uh, I'm not in love with him. But if you married him, we could have a maid and a new car, and maybe even a new house. I just hate this house, Mother. I don't like it either, dear. But that's no reason for marrying a man I don't love. Why not? Vida. Oh, I didn't mean it. I didn't. I don't care what we have, just as long as we're together. It's just that there are so many things that I that we should have and haven't got. Oh, I know, darling. I know, but wait and see. I'll get you everything you want, I promise. By baking cakes and pies for our neighbors. Oh, Mother, I feel so sorry for you. Well, stop feeling sorry and go to sleep. I love you, Mother. Good night, sweetheart. So you wanted your daughter to have everything in the world. Well, why not? But no money... No job, no business experience to help me get one. I walked my legs off looking for work. At last, I took the only job I could get, a waitress in a restaurant. And I made a deal with the owner to furnish the pies and pastry. Didn't leave much time for sleep, but it kept the house going. It paid for Vita's piano lessons and bought her new clothes. More than that, I was even saving money. But then came the day when Vita found out. I always thought that if you wanted to tell me where you worked, you would have told me long ago. But a waitress, my mother a waitress, oh, I'm so ashamed. I took the only job I could get, Vita. Aren't the pies bad enough? But waiting on tables, oh, why did you have to degrade us? I don't think you mean that, Vita. But if you I'm honestly... not really surprised. You've never spoken of your people who you came from, so perhaps it's natural. Maybe that's why Father... Oh, oh, oh Vita, I didn't mean to hurt you, I didn't. Oh, don't you see, darling... I'd never have taken the job if I hadn't wanted to keep us together under the same roof. And besides, if I can learn the restaurant business... Well... Well, someday I can open a place of my own, maybe. Give me time, darling. Another year. Maybe less. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. Really, I am. And if anyone asks me, I can always lie to them. No, no. You, you'll tell them that I'm a waitress. Oh, but why? After all, if we're going to own our own restaurant... No, it wasn't quite that easy, Inspector. The year went by, and my restaurant seemed as far off as ever. And then one day, I rushed into Wally Fay's real estate office. Mildred, well, what do you know? Hello, Wally. Oh, sit down, sit down. Now, just give me time to make a phone Don't call. Don't get any we... ideas. This is business. Business? What's business? I'm going to open up a restaurant, and you're going to help me. Oh, please, Wally. Well, I guess I am, then. Now, what's the score? Well, I found the location I want. It's an old house that hasn't been lived in for years. It's right near a busy intersection, which means it's good for drive-in trade. I clocked an average of 500 cars an hour. Do you realize what that means? And not another restaurant within three miles. Hey, it listens good. What's the address? A three... 4904 Glen Oaks Boulevard. Oh, let me see if I've got a listing on it oh, here. Oh, Wally, I've got to have that house. You know the angles and I don't, but oh, I want that property. Oh, <laughs> just like that, huh? <laughs> hey, it's listed all right. $10,000. Well, that means they'll take eight. It's owned by the Berrigan Estate. Berrigan, huh? You know them? Some old Pasadena fa... Oh, what's the matter? Hey, it says here the Berrigan Estate has already lost two pieces of property because of back taxes. <laughs> you relax, honey, and watch little Wally go to work. That's how I met Monte Berrigan, Inspector. Wally and I drove out to see him. He was at the beach house. Where we found him tonight? Yes. I let Wally do most of the talking. And that's our offer, Mr. Berrigan. 
How do you like it? Mrs. Pierce wants to buy the property, but she doesn't want to pay for it. Oh, but I do. It's only that at the moment... She needs time, Mr. Berrigan. Once the restaurant gets on its feet, you'll get $9,000. I'm asking ten. Yeah, and you'd settle for eight. (laughs) It's a very unusual offer. Do you think that you can make $9,000 clear in a year? Well, I figured very conservatively, Mr. Berrigan. Uh, Yes, I think I can make it. Now, look at it this way. If the place is successful, you get $1,000 more. And if it isn't, you get your property back and in much better condition than it is now. No, I'm afraid I'm not interested. Oh, please listen, Mr. Berrigan. I'm putting every cent I have into this place, and believe me, I haven't very much. I can't afford to lose any more than you. Uh, Look, I have all the information right here in black and white. I know exactly what it will cost and how much I can expect to make. I know I can swing it. I know I can. Very well, it's a deal. Just like that? Why not? Take, take, take care of the details, Mr. Fay. Well, Mrs. Pierce, how does it feel to be the owner of a white elephant? Oh, it feels wonderful. Nice guy, that Barrigan. He likes you, honey. Does he? He's nice looking. Yeah, yeah. No brains. <laughs> okay. You just leave the angles to Uncle Wally. Now, uh, what about that husband of yours? What about Bert? Bert? Yeah, you're still married to him. Well, you open the restaurant and boom, all of Bert's creditors will be on your neck trying to take it away from you. No, go ahead. Ask any lawyer about community property. Well, I'll... I'll think about it, Wally. I'll see Bert on Saturday. He's taking Vita for the day. You just remember, honey, no divorce, no restaurant. I don't want to even talk about it, Mildred. Not now. We've got to talk about it, Bert. But where's Vida? She's getting dressed. Don't you think I hate this as much as you do? But it's for her sake. I've got to think of her future. Vida thinks you're wonderful, doesn't she? Maybe that's why I keep trying to please her. I... I'll have to know a lot more about this deal with Wally Fay. It's pretty obvious you mean a lot to Wally. Oh, I can't help it if you believe everything he tells you. Bert, listen. I've put everything I've got into this new restaurant... I've got a big loan from the bank that's got to be paid off. Suddenly, everything is starting to take shape. Well, I, I've worked long and hard, and I'm going to get that divorce. No. No, you're not. There's very little you can do about it. I don't need your permission. If you don't mind, tell Vida I'm waiting for. Not a very pleasant story, is it, Inspector? You, uh, you filed for divorce in spite of his threats? Yes, and I quit my job. Spent every minute at the restaurant trying to help speed things along. Then one Sunday morning, I had a visitor. Where do you find the energy, Mrs. Pierce? Well, the silent partner. Come in, Mr. Berrigan. I've decided I've been silent long enough. I came by to check up on my investment. Well? It was wonderful. I never recognized the old place. Now, over there's the counter. We can handle 20 people, and the turnover's fast. Uh, that's in addition to the booth. And I'm overwhelmed. But today is Sunday. Why don't you get out of here? Oh, oh I'd love to, but I'm awfully busy. Uh, look, isn't the bar nice? I've got a nice bar, too, at the beach house. I also have an ocean. Oh, why should people come here to eat and go someplace else for a drink? Uh, that's why I put the bar in. Now, getting back to my ocean, let's have a swim and forget all about our investment. Huh? No, no, I, I couldn't possibly... As you grow older, Mrs. Pierce, you'll find that the only things you regret are the things you didn't do. <laughs> you win, Mr. Berrigan. I'll drive you home. Pick up your bathing suit. And if your daughter would like to come along... Well, that's very nice of you, inviting Vida. She'd love to come. Oh, she would, huh? But she's away for the day. Oh, well, I'm beginning to think that Vida's a very understanding daughter. Oh, this is wonderful. I can't even remember the last time I relaxed like this. How about another swim? Don't you dare suggest getting me out of this chair. You're the lazy type, huh? (laughs) Uh, Tell me, do you live here all the year round? No, no, I have the old family mansion in Pasadena. Oh complete with an iron deer on the front lawn and the ghosts of my ancestors in a greenhouse with no flowers. (laughs) Now I come here in the spring. Oh, it must be wonderful. Yes, it was lonely. 
How about a drink? Mm -mm, no, thanks. It's none of my business. But you drink too much. I know. I do too much of everything. <laughs> I'm spoiled. Monte Berrigan. That's an unusual name. Well, I'm an unusual fellow. Berrigan, Berrigan. Spanish? Mostly. A little Italian thrown in. <laughs> and just what do you do, Mr. Berrigan? I loaf. Oh, in a decorative and highly charming manner. You know, you're very beautiful when you smile. Mildred, look at me. I'm not very impressionable. I lost my awe of woman at an early age. But ever since you first came here, I've thought of nothing but what I'd say to you when we met again. Now I can't say anything. You take my breath away. Do I? I like you, Monty. You make me feel... I don't know. Warm and... And wanted. Beautiful. Yes. My heart's beating like a schoolboy's. I've fallen in love, Milton. I've fallen in love with you. And that was when, Mrs. Berrigan? Three years ago? Yes. And now Monty's dead. And you think Bert killed him. You're wrong, Inspector. Our stars will return in Act Two of Mildred Pierce in a moment. Libby, what's the news? Well, Joe McRae made news because he gave up a trip to Europe to work. Must have been quite a role. It is. Joel is the hero in Warner Brothers' western thriller, Colorado Territory. And what a thriller. I was on the edge of my seat all during the preview. Aren't uh, Virginia Mayo and Dorothy Malone in that, too? Yes, they are. And with very different roles. Virginia plays a high-spirited girl born on the frontier and educated in the dance halls of the 70s. Mm, sounds like interesting costumes. Yes, indeed. Virginia's are all specially designed. In Colorado Territory, she's something of a wildcat, so the studio designed off-shoulder blouses for her and full, colorful skirts, short enough for scrambling over rocks and swinging on a horse. I'll bet they were luxed a good many times before the shooting was over. They were. Incidentally, the way Hollywood studios handle cottons is a good tip for women everywhere. Studios give nice cottons lux flakes care, just as they do washable silks and rayons. These tiny sheer diamonds are so fast make such rich suds, they freshen cottons in a jiffy. And keep colors lovely far longer. And that's important, because cottons are just about the smartest fabrics going this summer. You'll wear them from morning till night. So don't risk wrong washing methods that may fade colors. They'll stay lovely up to three times as long with gentle Lux Flakes care. This fine product of Lever Brothers Company makes home washing wonderfully safe and easy. Lux Flakes are safe for anything safe in water alone. We return you to our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of Mildred Pierce, starring Rosalind Russell as Mildred and Zachary Scott as Monty. A few hours ago, Monty Barrigan was murdered. The police are holding two men under suspicion. Wally Fay and Bert Pierce, with the case against Pierce building stronger and stronger. At the Homicide Bureau, Barrigan's wife is still in Inspector Peterson's office. So you think Pierce is innocent? Well, we don't. Now, you were telling me about Monty Barrigan, how he fell in love with you three years ago. It's hard to remember the next few weeks. So much was happening, wonderful and exciting. Monty, and the opening of my own restaurant... You, uh, you referred to it as your restaurant, Mrs. Barry. Oh, it wasn't really all mine. Uh, Wally had worked very hard arranging the financing for me. I cut him in for a third. And since I hadn't paid for the property, Monty Berrigan owned another share, a sort of partnership. Uh, we were swamped with business that opening night. It was well past midnight before we closed the door. Well, what do you know? She's finally coming out of the kitchen. Oh, my feet. Give me a chair, Wally, before I fall down. Oh, hello, Monty. Well, your great success. 
Oh, if we can say that a month from now, maybe I'll believe it. <laughs> I've been getting acquainted here with your daughter. And guess what, Mother? Mr. Barragon's promised to take me to the race. Only if your mother comes along. <laughs> I'd love it. Oh, Wally, do me a favor. Well, you just name it, honey. Take Vita home. What? Home? Oh, Mother, anyone would think I was a child. Yeah. I figured on taking you home. Oh, please, Wally. You should see the kitchen. They'll be washing dishes there for another hour. Uh, I come out looking for an evening of fun and laughter, and what do I get? A date with a Girl Scout. Wally, will you please not refer to me Good as night, a... darling. Good night, Mother. And I trust we shall meet again soon, Mr. Berrigan. Very soon. Oh, I trust so, too, Vita. Get going, small fry. That's a very cute youngster, Mildred. No youngster anymore. Well, it's been quite a night. My white elephant may turn out to be solid gold. Monty, would you excuse me for a minute? I I'd better check tomorrow's menu. Oh, later. Look, I've been waiting for you all evening. It's a lifetime. Don't you ever realize... Bert. I didn't mean to bust in on you. They oh. they let me in the back way. Oh, uh, well, this is Mr. Barragon, my... my husband. Oh, I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Pierce. If you don't mind, I'd like to speak to Mildred. Yes, yes, of course. What What is it, Bert? I'll try to lose myself at the bar. About the divorce, Mildred, you can have it. I told you once to see if you could get along without me. I didn't think you could. Well, now I know better. I, I never thought it would end like this, Bert. Who knows how anything's going to end? Well, all the luck in the world. Thank you. Leaving already, Mr. Pierce? Well, I think I'd better. Oh, but doesn't this call for a drink? Here's a glass. You know... In the Berrigan family, there's an old Spanish proverb. One man's poison is... Well, I guess that means you don't want a drink. I apologize, Mr. Pierce. Monty hadn't really meant to be nasty. He seemed genuinely sorry for that little incident with Bert. Or maybe I just thought he was sorry. Because I was in love with Monty. You still haven't given me one reason why Bert Pierce isn't the murderer. In fact, you've given me a very good reason why he is. Pierce couldn't account for his movements at the time of the murder, and you've just told me the motive, Mrs. Berrigan. Jealousy. Excuse me, Inspector. This report just came in. I thought you'd want to read it. Oh, thanks. Uh, pardon me, Mrs. Berrigan. Is he sure of this information? You know Charlie, sir. He doesn't like to make mistakes. Now, tell him to keep on it. Yes, sir. Who's I to call one, Mrs. Berrigan? She's my business manager. Well, she tells us that you phoned her from your office late last night and asked where Mr. Berrigan was. She says you seem quite upset. Well, it, it was just a business matter. And tell me something else. Why did you take Wally Faye to the beach house? Did you know that Berrigan was lying there dead? No, no, I didn't. Then you were at the beach house. Why didn't you tell us before? And why did you run away from the house? Wasn't it because you knew that Berrigan was dead? No, no, I didn't. And I... why are you trying to pin the murder on Faye? I think you'd better tell me the truth now. I did it. I killed Monty Berrigan. You? But why? Your restaurant was a success. You were in love with him. You married him. I you... didn't marry him. Not until much later. At the time, too many things were uncertain. But the restaurant was a success. In a few months, I opened another place. And then I started a chain. In three years, I'd built up five restaurants. They made money. Everything I touched turned into money. And I needed it. I needed it for Vida. She was a young lady now with expensive tastes and several boyfriends. One in particular, Ted Forrester. One night, Monty and I joined them for a round of the night club. The handsomest couple on the floor, Mildred. Vida and Ted. She likes him, Monty. A lot, I think. Who wouldn't? He has a million dollars. Now, what's the matter? Nothing. I've just run out of jokes, I guess. No, no, no. Now, tell me. What's wrong? Well, I've had a little bad luck, Mildred. I won't be able to afford many more evenings like this. Do you need money? Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, it's not quite that bad. Monty. Not yet. Monty, I want you to take this cash. Mildred, please. You've been awfully good to us. Now, take it. All right. But I want it distinctly understood that it's only a loan. Yes, at first it bothered Monty to take money from me. Then it became a habit with him. After a while, Wally Faye found out about it. The accountant told me. Almost $2,000 in six weeks. What's the big idea? We owe Monty a great deal. We paid him off long ago. We don't owe him a cent. Now, look, baby, I'm in business with you. But keeping Berrigan in monogram shirts isn't my idea You've of business. You've done all right. 
When you opened up that cafe at the beach, I didn't ask to be cut in, did I? I can do what I want with my own money. So can I. Now, look, when you walked out on Bird, it was okay with me. I was glad to see you get some sense in your head. But now you've fallen for a guy who's a worse foul ball than Bird ever thought of being. Who I fall for is none of your business. Well, I say it is. This Berrigan's no good, Mildred. He'll bleed you dry. Suppose I'm in love with him. Okay. I guess I finally know just where I stand. That's right. Now you know. Do I dare come in? I wish you would, Ida. Things are getting a little out of hand. I hate all women. My, my. Thank goodness you're not one. (laughs) (laughs) Laughing boy there seems burned at the edges. A small green-eyed monster. Wally jealous? (laughs) Doesn't sound like Wally. No profit in it. I just told him I was in love with Marty Barragon. Are you? I thought I was once, but not now. Mildred, listen to me. I know I shouldn't say If it's this, about but... Monty, I agree with you. No. No, it's Vida. What? She's been borrowing money. From whom? Anybody would give her any. Waitresses, mostly. And they're scared to say anything. You know how it is. See that they're paid back. I'm sorry I had to tell you, Mildred. Oh, I don't blame Vida entirely. A couple of times, Monty was with her. Well, I brought those statements you wanted. Now, about the Laguna Beach unit. Hello, I think... everybody. Oh, hello, Vida. Oh, and Monty, well, come in. Oh, we aren't interrupting a big business conference. No, just a teeny one. I wish I could get that interested in work. You were probably frightened by a callus at an early age. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't mind, Vida, you're sitting on the Laguna Beach statement. That's what I like about you, Ida. So delightfully provincial. I like you, too. As for you, Junior, don't look now, but you're standing under a brick wall. I don't get it. You will when it falls on you. (laughs) Mother, look. Look what Monty gave me for my birthday. This necklace. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, yes, darling. It's beautiful. And there's something else for your birthday out the window there. I hope you like it, Vida. Mother, oh, not a car. Oh, it's just beautiful. Happy? Am I? How about me, young lady? After all, I picked it out, you know. Oh, Monty. The two nicest presents I ever got. Come on, let's go for a drive. Nothing I'd like better. Monty, I'd like to talk to you. Fine. Run along, Vida, and dent your fenders. Alone? Oh, well, I'll see you later at the club. Be careful, darling. Thanks a million, Mother. What's the matter, Mildred? I want you to stay away from Vida. Why, have I suddenly sprouted two heads? Or has Ted Forrester boy been complaining to you? It isn't funny. Vida's not 18 and spoiled rotten. What's that got to do with me? Look, Monty, I've done without a lot of things, including happiness sometimes, because I wanted Vita to have everything. Oh, but kids at that age, they're all thoughtless. I still don't like it. And I blame it on the way she's been living. I blame it on you. I don't think you understand Vita very well, Mildred. She's not like you. You'll never make a waitress out of Vita. Hmm. You can't help looking down at me because I work for a living, can you? All right, I work. I cook food and sell it and make a profit which I might point out you're not too proud to share with me. Take it easy, Mildred. You're right. There's no point in going on like this. You're interfering with my life, and worst of all, with my plans for Vida, and I won't stand for it. I always knew that someday we'd come to this particular point in the scheme of things. You want Vida and your business and a nice, quiet life, and the price of all that is me. You can go back to making your pies now, Mildred. We're through. Wait a minute, Monty. You've had expenses taking Vida out. I don't know how much we owe you, but if this isn't enough... No, I've always wondered how it felt to take a tip. Thank you. Just mark the account paid in full. I saw nothing of Monty for over a month. And suddenly, Vida was spending all her time again with the Forrester boy. The one with a million dollars. I was terribly busy. The restaurant business was falling off. Nothing drastic, but enough to keep me constantly on the job. One afternoon, I had a caller. Ted Forrester's mother. I've been looking forward so much to meeting you, Mrs. Pierce. I'm sure we're going to work out our little problems splendidly. Little problems? Well, hasn't Vida told you? Told me what? Well, your daughter somehow got the idea that... Well, I can understand it, of course. Any girl wants to get married. But Ted has no such thing in mind. I want that made clear. You mean they're engaged... Vida and your son? Yes, and I'm sure you'll agree that we should put a stop to it. But why should Vida want to marry Ted if he doesn't want to marry her? I'm not a mind reader, Mrs. Pierce. But if you or this girl employ any more tricks trying to blackmail my son into marriage... Trying to what? I'll prevent this marriage. 
I shall prevent it in any way I can. I don't think you need to worry, Mrs. Forrester. Having you in my family is a pretty dismal prospect. Good afternoon. Well, what's so important, Mother? Yeah, what's up, Mildred? Reed and I were Wally, just Wally, do you it. mind? This is private. I think I know what's bothering you. Well, Wally knows all about it. Wally knows that you're talking about getting married? Getting married? I am married, Mother. Oh. Ted and I were married on my birthday. I'm sorry, but it's done. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, I wanted to so many times. But you're always so busy, and besides, I was afraid. Afraid of me? Oh, Mother, I've been so miserable. I made a mistake, and I didn't know how to tell you. Oh, you don't love Ted, is that it? Yeah, that's no. right, Mildred. She made a mistake, and the only thing to do is an annulment. That's the clean, quick way to handle a situation. Oh, well, I suppose it is. But can it be done quietly? You just leave it to me, Mildred. Uncle Wally still knows all the angles. <laughs> and you should have seen Mrs. Forrester's face when Wally told their lawyer. Oh, Mother, you'd have died. When Wally told their lawyer what? That the annulment was going to cost them $20,000. You asked for money? Well, of course I asked for money. They wanted the annulment, didn't they? And no publicity? Vida! How could you do such a thing? How could you? And I got the money, see? A nice big check. Oh, I'll have to give Wally part of it, but there's still enough for money. Me to... That's what you live for, isn't it? You'd do anything for money, wouldn't you? Even blackmail. For heaven's sakes, Mother, grow up. Yes, it's about time I did. All right, Vida. From now on, things are going to be different. I'll say they're going to be different. Why do you think I went to all this trouble? Why do you think I want money so badly? All right, why? Are you sure you want to know? Yes. With this money, I can get away from you. Vida! From you and your fried chicken and your kitchens and everything that smells of grease. I can get away from this house and its cheap furniture and away from Vida. this town and... I think I'm seeing you for the first time in my life. You're cheap and horrible. You think just because you made a little money, you can get a new hairdo and some expensive clothes and turn yourself into a lady. Well, you can't. Because you'll never be anything but common... Common like your father who lived over a grocery store. Common like your mother who took in washing. With this money, I can get away from everything that makes me think of this place or you. Give me that check, Vita. Give it to me. Not on your life. I said give it to me. No, no. No, you're tearing it up. Yes, I'm tearing it up. Now get your things and clear out of this house before they throw them into the street and you with them. Get out! <laughs> We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, our stars will continue with Act Three of Mildred Pierce. Tonight, we have asked lovely Claudia Barrett to pay us a return visit. I understand, Claudia, that you spent so much time on the set of The Fountainhead that visitors thought you were on the publicity staff. I almost felt that way, Mr. Keeley. It's a wonderful story. Yes, the book made publishing history, and I predict a great box office success for the picture. Gary Cooper gives an outstanding performance as a man who will make any sacrifice for his beliefs, with Raymond Massey an excellent choice for his rival, a publisher. I was fascinated by Patricia Neal. As Warner Brothers are to be congratulated on discovering Pat, she's sensational. Isn't her wardrobe in the Fountainhead Divine? Even her lingerie is dreamy. The wardrobe department made her slips and nighties in unusual shades like honey beige and ice blue to emphasize her blondness. Did she have them copied as many stars do? The studio gave them to her after the picture. Wasn't she lucky? And you know, Mr. Kennedy, the wardrobe mistress mistress told her to be sure to wash them in Lux Flakes. Oh, you'll find Hollywood Studios set great store by Lux Flakes, Claudia. They're so safe. These tiny sheer diamonds keep pretty lingerie color fresh far longer. Patricia's slips and nighties looked as nice as new when the studio gave them to her. That's not surprising. Scientific tests show that under things stay new looking three times as long when they get Lux Flakes care. It's a known fact that wrong washing methods make colors fade much too soon. Lux Flakes are so fast, make such rich suds, they whisk away soil in a jiffy. Yet they're so safe, 
They leave colors lovely. Thank you for coming tonight, Claudia Barrett. Now, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. The curtain rises on the third act of Mildred Pierce, starring Rosalind Russell as Mildred and Zachary Scott as Monty. It's almost dawn now, but the lights still burn brightly in Inspector Peterson's office as Mildred Pierce continues her story. I had said some awful things to my daughter. I had driven her away. I went away for a while, too, but not far enough. Something kept pulling me back. Finally, I gave in and came home. But no sign of Vida. Not even a letter. Mexico, huh? So that's where you've been. People still eating in restaurants, Ida? Not enough of them. I'm glad you're back. Uh, seen anyone I know? No. I wondered how long it would take you to get around to Vida. Why don't you forget about her? I can't. Maybe she didn't turn out as well as I hoped. But she's still my daughter, and I... I want her back. Well, personally, Vita's convinced me that alligators have the right idea. They devour their young. Hello? Hello, is Mildred there? This is Bert Pierce again. Just a moment. Your ex-husband. He's been calling every day for two weeks. Yeah. Hello, Bert. I just got back this morning. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. How about dinner? Dinner? I... I'd like to see you, Mildred. Or would you rather I didn't? I'd be glad to see you, Bert. You can pick me up at the house at 7.30. Thanks. I don't know why, Ida, but it's going to be nice seeing Bert again. I thought you might like this place, Mildred. A little noisy, but... Since our friend Wally Fay owns it... I still don't know why you insisted on coming here. I thought it was a good idea at the time. Now I'm not so sure. What's that mean? Look over there. Under the spotlight. Vida! I'm sorry I did it like this, Mildred. I just didn't know how to tell you. Where are you going? I'm going to get Vida out of here. I guess that means I'd better find Wally first. Dream of wild, dream of wild. We're sure to find... Happiness, and I get all the things you've always signed for. Gee, I'd like to see you looking swell, baby. Diamond bracelets were worth just a sell, baby. Till that lucky day. Mildred, well, come on in. Hello, Wally. How was the trip? Sometime I'll tell you all about it. Right now I'm going to take Vita home. Oh, does Vita know that? No. I'm hoping you'll help me. <laughs> oh, not me, honey. She's your daughter. Uh, let me give you a little advice. If you want Vita to do anything for you, you better hit her over the head first. Where'll I find her? Oh, her dressing room is straight down the hall. Well, quite a surprise, Mother. What can I do for you? I... Well, I... I want you to come home, Vita. This isn't your kind of life. No. What is my kind of life? Oh, Vita. It isn't easy for me to beg like this. You must think I'm on a string. Go away, Vita. Come back, Vita. Oh, no. We'll have the house redecorated. We'll, we'll get all new furniture. A new piano. You'll like it, I know. You just don't understand, do you? You think new curtains are enough to make me happy? No. I want a little more than that. I want the kind of life that Monty Berrigan taught me, and you won't let me have it. I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused you, but if I went back, it would only start all over again. You know how I am, Mother. But if I could give you the kind of life Monty taught you, would you be willing to, well, to come home then? But you couldn't, could you? Drop in again sometime, Mother. I'll be here. <laughs> There was just one thing left for me to do. I had heard that the old Berrigan mansion in Pasadena was now up for sale. Oh, now look, Mildred. You can't be serious about buying this old barn. 
You're not a very good salesman, are you, Monty? No, I suppose I'm not. You're here alone. Well, somebody has to be on the premises to show the place. Need I add that I'm broke? What about the beach house? It's the only thing I haven't lost. What do you want, Mildred? You don't want to buy this antiquated tomb, you'd be out of your mind. Oh, I don't know. A little remodeling would do wonders. You're not fooling me. I remember too well. I remember how it was with us once, and so do you. Something neither one of us can forget. Then you can do me a great kindness. If I can. Ask me to marry you. Why? Well, your attitude is hardly enthusiastic. You went to considerable trouble to get rid of me once, so naturally I'm a little startled. Well, I, I have a good reason for wanting you to marry me. Vida. Why Vida? Your reason for doing anything is usually Vida. What's your answer, Monty? I can't afford you, Mildred. I'm sorry, but all I have is pride and a name. I can't sell either of them. Things are considerably different now from what they were at the beginning. I know. I, I haven't forgotten. I told you once that you were the only woman in the world for me. I loved you then, and I love you now. Then why can't we Because I that? won't go on taking tips from you. Of course, if I owned a share in your business... How but... much of a share would your pride require, Monty? Don't put it that way, Mildred. I'm not enjoying this. I'm only doing... How much to... of a share? I think I can leave that up to you. It's a deal, Monty. Sold. One Barragon. We were married a week later. And I set about restoring the old Barragon mansion to the show place that it once was. Soon now I'd be ready for another talk with Vida. But before that happened... Maybe I shouldn't have stopped by, Mildred, but I'll only be a minute. But I'm so glad you came, Bert. Mildred, I've got a lot of nerve asking this, but are you really in love with Monty Berrigan? No, not exactly. But we understand each other. And I thought that, that maybe now... Maybe now Vito will come back. Oh, I know I'm a fool, Bert. But I can't help it. I... I brought you a wedding present, Mildred. Wedding present? Take a look out there on the terrace. What's out there that I... Vida. Bert, did you ask Vida to come with you? No. No, she called me up. She... She tried to pretend it was something else, but I finally got the truth out of her. She wants to come home, Mildred. Now... Now go and get her. Mother. Oh, really, I will, I promise. I'll never talk to you like that again. I said a few rather nasty things myself. Oh, darling, if we can only trust I each other and... I don't believe it. I simply don't believe it. Monty! Well, hey, tears of joy is it joy at seeing me again, I hope. Well, of course. Well, you look lovely, prodigal. It's about time you came to see us. See you, but I'm staying. I'm the new star boarder. Wonderful. Just don't call me father. For the next few weeks, I was happier than I'd been in years. I didn't see nearly as much of Vita as I wanted to, but it wasn't her fault. I was busy. The restaurants were running into trouble. But with Vita back, it didn't seem to matter. I planned a wonderful party for her, Inspector. It took place last night. Yes, uh, so I understand. Only I wasn't there. A sudden meeting came up at the office. The accountants and a lawyer named Hopkins... At 11 o'clock, we were still at it. I've told you a dozen times, Mrs. Berrigan. In simple language, you owe my clients money. They must either be paid or you show cause why the restaurants should not be taken away from you. If you resist, your creditors force you into bankruptcy. It's as simple as that. I haven't a cent of ready cash, so I guess that's that. Any ideas, Wally? Well, you can still manage the restaurants. That's very nice of you, Wally. Stealing the business right out from under me and letting me run it for you, huh? Now listen, I've got to put up the dough to keep us out of court. Well, you've been bleeding this business dry so you can live the way you have since Vita came home. You said so yourself. I know, I know. The creditors want your hide. I can't stop them. Another month like this and we'd all be out in the cold. Well, as it is, As it I'm... is, only I am. You'd still be all right if Monty hadn't forced the issue. What's Monty got to do with this? He wants to sell his share of the business. What? i got to go along with him or I'm out too. You didn't know? No. 
<laughs> you married him. I didn't. Let's go, Hopkins. As soon as they left, I called the house. I'd answered the telephone. But Monty isn't here, Mildred. He drove off about 20 minutes ago, just after the party broke up. Then let me speak to Vita. Well, Vita's gone, too. Um, I, um... I think some of them went over to the Adamses for a dip in the pool. Now, if you uh, want... No, I... no, it's not too important. Thanks, Ida. There was a gun in the office safe. It had belonged to Bert. And I hadn't wanted it around the house. I had a hunch where Monty would be, Inspector. The beach house. He was alone when I got there. And I... I killed him. You're lying, Mrs. Berrigan. We know you weren't alone in the house with him. We have proof of that now and of various other things. Yes, sir. You can bring her in, Frank. We've had a slant on you all night, Mrs. Berrigan. You were the key. I had to put the pressure on you. Well, the key turned. Vida! The sergeant will tell you where they found her. We picked the girl up at the airport. Grabbed her off a plane headed for Arizona. She didn't like it very much. I don't understand. Your mother, mother I... just told me everything. Why did you kill him? You told him. You promised not to tell. You promised you'd help me get away. Vita, Vita, don't say any more. Well, it doesn't matter now. That's all we needed to hear. Miss Pierce, you were already at the beach house with Berrigan when your mother arrived there. Isn't that right? Let her alone. I... I didn't know Vita was there. I expected Monty to be alone. There was a record on the phonograph. They didn't hear me come in. Uh, hello, Mildred. <laughs> We weren't expecting you. I'm glad she's here, Monty. I've got something to tell you, Mother. I love Monty. He's going to divorce you and marry me. No, Vida. He isn't. There's nothing you can do about it. I can do this much about it. Mildred, use your head. Shooting me won't solve anything. It would solve a lot of things. Oh, but I can't do it. I just can't do it. Mildred, wait a minute. Let her go, Monty. <laughs> I, think she I put the, the gun way. down and walked out of the room. Just where did you get the I could hear their voices as I went toward Not the car. Joke, like that. joke? You think I'm going to marry you? You're crazy. But you love me. You told me you love me. After a few drinks, I say a lot of things. Listen to me, Marty. I didn't hear the rest. You I was starting my motor and the here. noise of... But then I heard the shots. I rushed back to the house. Peter! He said horrible things. He told me to get out. He laughed at me. The gun was there and I... I didn't mean to. You've got to help me, Mother. I've got to get away before they find him. I can't get you out of this, Vita. What are you going to do? Who are you phoning? Give me the police. No, Mother, no. Think what'll happen if they find me. Think what'll happen. I don't care anymore, Vita. Yes, you do. You do care. It's your fault as much as mine. Hello, police headquarters, Sergeant Lyons. You've got to help me. Help me, Mother, just this one. Police headquarters. I'll change. I promise I will. I'll be different. Hello, this is police headquarters. Help me. Help me. So you tried to help her. I drove aimlessly for 10 or 15 minutes. Then, on the road, I passed Wally's Cafe. Suddenly, I had a wild idea. I parked the car and went in. A wild idea to frame Wally Faye. No, no, not that exactly. I knew you'd see through a frame-up. But it might take hours. By that time, Vita would be on a plane and I could tell you the truth. Uh, not this time, Mrs. Berrigan. This time, your daughter pays for her own mistakes. Okay, Frank, take her downstairs. Mother! I'm sorry, Vita. I did the best I could. Don't worry about me. I'm really not worth it. Oh, Frank, see that Faye and Bert Pierce are released. Well, we could use some fresh air in here. It looks like a nice morning out there. You can go now. We'll call you when we want you. You know, Mrs. Berrigan, there are times when I regret being a policeman. <laughs> Well, they're booking the girl, Inspector. You told Frank to release the others? Yeah. Come here, McNally. Take a look out the window. Pierce and Mrs. Berrigan. Together. Yeah. Maybe that's where they belong. Together. Our stars will return to their curtain calls in a moment. Libby, 
When you expect extra company for dinner, what's the first thing you check? Do I have enough spoons? I guess most women do. <laughs> and Lever Brothers Company has a thrifty solution. An amazing value in original Rogers silver plate teaspoons just in time for summer entertaining. I've seen them. They're beautiful. And only 50 cents for three. These teaspoons are extra heavy silver plate made by the world's largest silversmiths. The same quality and design we offered before the war. I love the pattern. It's a graceful wheat design called Allure. Later, you can get all sorts of matching pieces, even butter spreaders and oyster forks. An order blank for these extra pieces comes packed with your spoons. Why, you can build a service for six for as little as $10.25 with Lux Flakes box tops. Why not start yours today by ordering three original Rogers silver plate teaspoons? Just send 50 cents, the top from a box of Lux Flakes, and your name and address to Box 31, Wallingford, Connecticut. This offer is good only in continental United States, Hawaii, and Alaska, and is subject to all local and state regulations. I'll repeat the offer. For three original Rogers teaspoons, just send 50 cents and a Lux Flakes box top to Lux, Box 31, Wallingford, Connecticut. Here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. Fine drama requires fine acting, and tonight's stars certainly gave us that. Here they are returning to the footlights, Rosalind Russell and Zachary Scott. <laughs> I suppose you both will be off for summer vacations before long. What are your plans, Rosalind? Well, I'm going to do some painting. Pictures of houses, Ros? Pictures, pictures. It's a new hobby. Now, what school of painting appeals to you, Rosalind? Are you an impressionist? Uh... Well, more of a hit and missionist. <laughs> <laughs> I paint by instinct. You mean you never had any lessons? <laughs> oh, just one lesson. You see, my first portrait was of my son, and when my husband saw it, he suggested some lessons. <laughs> but after the first class, the teacher said I'd better not come back. He was afraid teaching would destroy my wild freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get enough compliments on your acting, so it probably doesn't matter. By the way, Zach, I saw you with a very beautiful young lady at the premiere of your new Warner Brothers picture, Flamingo Road. Thank you, Bill. I think she's kind of beautiful, too. That was my daughter, Waverly. Oh, you're a severest critic, no doubt. Well, she just won't believe me as a villain. She knows who's boss at home. <laughs> Incidentally, Bill, I always make a hit when I come home after a Lux Radio Theater date. Oh, your family likes your performances here? No, it's the Lux Flakes I bring home. No, I know what you mean. <laughs> I always keep them in my home, too. Oh, Bill, what was the attraction you mentioned for next week? It's a prize film comedy, Rosalind. The RKO success, The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer. And we'll have two original stars of the picture, Cary Grant and Shirley Temple. This picture delighted millions with its fresh original comedy, entertainment that demands the special talents of Cary Grant and Shirley Temple, so we have them both next Monday. Well, I know you'll have a great show, Bill. Good night. Good night, Ross. Good, good night. night. Good and night. we'll see you soon. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Cary Grant and Shirley Temple in The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Rosalind Russell will soon be seen in the Columbia picture Tell It to the Judge. Heard in tonight's cast were Life Erickson as Wally, Donald Woods as Bert, and Rhoda Williams as Vida. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer, starring Cary Grant and Shirley Temple. <laughs> the generous new bath size Lux Toilet Soap is making a hit with screen stars, with lovely women everywhere. Try this fine new product of Lever Brothers Company. You'll be delighted with the big satin smooth cake. You'll enjoy its abundant creamy lather, the delicate flower-like fragrance it leaves on your skin. The new bath size Lux Toilet Soap is available everywhere. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer, starring Cary Grant and Shirley Temple. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.